Have you ever thought about how those perfectly ripe peaches and juicy tomatoes find their way to your grocery store shelves in the middle of winter? That's all because of canning. But how did it come to be an essential part of our lives? Let's get into the origins of canning, the brilliant mind behind it, and the science that makes it work. Before the invention of canning, traditional food preservation methods such as drying, pickling, and smoking were commonly used. These methods had limitations in preserving food over extended periods and often led to spoilage, causing food shortages and malnutrition. The world developed a real need for canning when, before the 19th century, it was hard for troops to decide what to eat. They had to feed their troops, but an all-you-can-eat buffet wasn't part of the war's loot. As the French Grande Armée prepared for the Napoleonic Wars, they had to deal with this problem head-on. In their search for an answer, they came up with one of the tastiest ideas ever. Canning! You won't believe how many turns this story about canning has. More than a beginner can open. In the early 1800s, the French government put a juicy offer on the table. A hefty cash award of 12,000 francs to anyone who could devise a cheap and effective method for preserving large quantities of food. The goal was to create well-preserved military rations for the Grande Armée. When leading a massive army into battle, you can't just stop at the local bakery for a baguette and some brie. The need for a steady supply of quality food was paramount, but limited food availability during the winter months was putting a damper on Napoleon's culinary conquests. In 1809, Epert noticed something intriguing. Food cooked inside a sealed jar didn't spoil as long as the seals held up. He had bumped into a culinary miracle. He developed a method to seal food in a glass jar. And little did he know, he was about to become a legend in the world of food preservation. He received the pricely sum of 12,000 francs from the French government in 1810 for his revolutionary invention. No one back then could explain the success of a Pert's strategy, until the great Louis Pasteur discovered the microbiological mysteries of food rotting and developed pasteurization half a century would pass. For now, however, it is sufficient to claim that a Pert's invention was truly innovative. With their newly acquired canned goodies in tow, the Grand Dame was ready to test the waters, or rather the jars. They began experimenting with issuing canned foods to their soldiers. However, there was a hiccup in this canned crusade. The canning process was as slow as a snail on a stroll, and the development and transport stages were even slower. It meant that they couldn't ship large quantities of canned provisions across the vast French Empire. Alas, the wars ended before the canning process could be perfected, and the canned cuisine dream took a temporary back seat. Following the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars, the canning process slowly but surely began to catch on in other European countries, and even crossed the mighty Atlantic to the United States. The canning train was moving, and it was about to pick up some serious steam. Across the English Channel, another culinary twist was brewing. Philippe de Girard, a Frenchman with a penchant for innovation, landed in London. He teamed up with British merchant Peter Durand, who was about to play a pivotal role in the canning saga. In 1810, Girard used Durand as his agent to patent his canning idea. However, Durand wasn't much of a foodie himself and decided to sell the patent to Brian Donkin and John Hall in 1811. These enterprising individuals were in business as Donkin Hall and Gamble, located in Bermondsey. Brian Donkin went to work, further refining the canning process. Initially, canning was a laborious, time-consuming affair. Each large can had to be handmade, and the cooking process took six hours. It made canned food a luxury only the elite could afford. It wasn't exactly budget-friendly for the common folks. The primary market for canned food at this stage was the British Army and the Royal Navy. By 1817, Donkin was raking in 3,000 euro worth of canned meat sales in just six months. In 1824, Sir William Edward Perry embarked on a voyage to the Arctic in HMS Fury, taking along canned beef and pea soup. In 1829, Admiral Sir James Ross followed suit, and even the renowned Sir John Franklin brought canned food on his expedition in 1845. The can he left behind was later opened in 1939. And believe it or not, the contents were still edible and nutritious. They just don't make cans the way they used to, or so it seems. 
In the 1880s, it was believed that lead from the cans played a role in the disastrous outcome of the 1845 Franklin Expedition, which aimed to chart and navigate the elusive Northwest Passage. But as they say, history is a fickle beast. In 2013 and 2016, new studies emerged suggesting that lead poisoning might not have been the culprit after all. Instead, the crew's ill health was likely due to malnutrition, specifically a zinc deficiency. So the canned food industry escaped being the scapegoat for an Arctic expedition gone awry. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic, the United States was getting in on the canning action. Robert Ayers, with a dash of American ingenuity, set up the first canning factory in New York City in 1812. He used improved tin-plated wrought iron cans to preserve oysters, meats, fruits, and vegetables. Demand for canned food skyrocketed during significant wars of the 19th century. The Crimean War, American Civil War, and Franco-Prussian War introduced a whole new audience to canned delicacies, predominantly working-class men who were now fed by the magic of canned goods. After wars ended, these companies began to pivot towards the civilian market. Companies like Underwood, Nestle, Heinz, and others jumped into the game, providing quality canned food for urban city dwellers. The late 19th century witnessed an explosion in the range of canned food available to the masses. Canners engaged in fierce competition, introducing novel foodstuffs, flamboyant decorative labels, and competitive prices. The canning world was sizzling, and everyone wanted a bite of the canned pie. Then, World War I exploded onto the scene, and the demand for canned food reached an all-time high. Military commanders were searching for vast quantities of cheap, high-calorie food that would withstand the brutal conditions of trench warfare and long-distance transport. This food had to be non-perishable, sturdy, and most importantly, delicious. Throughout the war, British soldiers relied on low-quality canned provisions such as the famous British bully beef, canned sausages, and makinoki. By 1916, the troops had had enough. Widespread dissatisfaction and complaints about the poor quality of canned food led the militaries to seek better options to boost morale. It was the birth of the complete meal in a can. After the war, the companies that supplied military canned food began to focus on improving the quality of their goods for civilian consumption. Canning had now cemented its place in history as a culinary game changer with humble beginnings on the battlefield. It made food more accessible, efficient, and dependable. It fueled explorations, battles, and the daily lives of urban populations. It brought the world a step closer to the convenience we enjoy today. The journey of canning didn't end with World War I, though. In the early 1900s, it became a popular household technology, thanks to new sealable jars invented by Charles Ball and Alexander Kerr. Canning allowed people to preserve summer flavors well into the chill of winter. It marked a turning point in the very way people stored and enjoyed food. From the 20th century up till now, food comprised a substantial portion of the average family's budget. Canning allowed people to enjoy a wider variety of food without breaking the bank. It was the foodie revolution of its time. In 2022, the global canned food market was nestled at a cozy spot with a whopping value of $107 million. As we look ahead, the forecast predicts a delightful expansion with a compounded annual growth rate of 4.65%. By the time we reach 2028, the canned food market is gearing up to present a grand feast, boasting a mouth-watering value of $140 million. That's something crazy, right? What's your wildest thoughts about canning? Do let us know in the comment section below. And stay tuned for our upcoming videos. See ya!